Next question is from Jazz Fitness. Can you discuss when supersets are appropriate and when they are not? Some people suggest they are only suitable for antagonist muscles. What is your approach to programming? Okay, so first I'd like to start with the easy part, which is who supersets are not for. Um, who supersets, people who are uh, overly stressed, whose bodies are very, very sensitive to lots of intensity, maybe people who already train a lot with a lot of circuits, mm -hmm. uh, you, know, uh, you know, that style of training, a superset, probably not going to be good for you. In fact, you need to transition away from doing exercises without rest in between sets. You want to do maybe more standard strength training. So like if I took a client who is doing lots of HIIT training, lots of circuit training, you know, overly stressed, under eating, um, that person would not be the person I would do supersets to. Uh, now, as far as who they're appropriate for, supersets are great when they're programmed properly. And it's usually when you're transitioning from a traditional strength training, you know, straight set type routine, mm -hmm. then you go into the superset type stuff. <laughs> and supersets are phenomenal oh, for yeah. the pump. Mm -hmm. They really maximize the pump in ways that other, you know, combos of exercises don't seem to do. They were favorites. Uh, it's a favorite tool of bodybuilders. Um, I know in the 70s, bodybuilders did lots of supersets leading up to competition because it would enhance the pump, have them you know, be able to, to, to uh, have more stamina when they're posing on stage. Um, and there's a million and one different ways to, you know, to apply. Well, this is uh, as far as asking us about our programming on it. I mean, if you have our programs, this we introduced that into MAPS Aesthetic. Phase three. That's I the think? first time that we introduce it, right? Yeah. So no, no, no. It's it in, it's in anabolic, anabolic too. Yeah. Oh, what part is it in anabolic? Phase three. three. Oh, phase three. It isn't. Yeah. That's yeah. right. You're yeah. right. There isn't. So I mean, that's just it. It should follow that 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 process, right? We do straight sets, you know, and you're doing heavy heavy five six repetitions in the first phase. Then you go to the second phase where we're moving to more like ten to twelve reps. And then when you start getting into the you know, 15, 20 reps, like this is where supersets make yeah. sense because you're chasing, you're chasing more volume. You're chasing more reps. It makes sense. You're shortening rest periods a lot of times. So this is make, this is where it makes sense to be programmed. But no matter what, if you, if you do this, it's ideal, just like anything else to be kind of sticking with it for about four, six weeks tops. Mm -hmm. And then you want to move out of it. It's a great tool that just like many other things we talk about on this show, but where the people that shouldn't be doing are the ones that tend to gravitate towards it. I, I remember getting clients that the abusers. Yeah, that that's how they trained. It was yeah. it was like a circuit. Just living always, it. Yeah, always back to back to back to back, or even like tri setting where they're kind of they're going three extra like little yeah. mini little mini circuits the whole entire well, it's workout. It's funny you bring that up because I really didn't even do supersets until I mean we we did some things like twenty ones and whatnot, whereas like you know you're you're doing kind of like exercises back to back to back, but uh, I never really did the programming of it until I actually started working out at 24 Hour Fitness and then Adam was my manager at the time and was starting to take me from, you know, this now do this one real quick. And it just fucking blew me up. Like mm -hmm. my, my, I remember, especially on the chest exercises, I, I felt like I like mastered everything in terms of like, like bench pressing and then going from like a bench press and then doing a flyer, like multiple push ups right after that was just like so exhaustive, so new. Like I, it would just get to a point where I couldn't even move. Like my arms were so stiff and my chest was so stiff and it, it just had like great benefit, but it's, it's really because I, I didn't do that at all. Like right. I, I just, I didn't do that that was something that was a new stimulus and so it, it definitely it serves your body and then you can adapt to it but then you need to move on yeah so the, the re so when you do supersets for antagonistic muscle groups meaning you know like chest and back or biceps and triceps the value of that especially for the large muscle groups is it tends to help with form and function so if i did like a good row and then went to a bench press. Did you say function? Function. Yeah. You hit that. <laughs> yeah. that, that was that Freudian slip? Ooh, function. Uh, it helps you with your posture. It helps you connect to the back muscles as you're pressing, you know, that type of deal. Mm -hmm. For the same muscle group, so like if you're doing like one chest exercise to another chest exercise or one back exercise to another back exercise, I like to combine a compound with a single joint movement. So compound and isolation. And you can do them you know, one before the other or flip them. So there's different benefits to both. Either pre-exhaust the muscle with an isolation movement, move into a compound, or do the flip, do the heavy compound movement, then move to the isolation to really squeeze more blood in the muscle. Those are really my three favorite ways to, to use supersets. 